This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. Uh, for today's physics lesson, you will learn the particle model. So uh, the learning objectives are going to be particle model of solids, liquids, and gases, Brownian diffusion, diffusion motion, expanding, contracting, and density. So you already know that the, there are three states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, we, today we will learn their properties with aid of particle model. Because you know that all substances around us are made up of particles. So let's look at the particle model, particle arrangement inside each state of matter. Here is some examples for you. In the first picture, you are seeing that the liquid, if we zoom into the liquid, the particles arrangement is going to be like this. Uh, here is a solid, uh, the example for two solid, this, um, this uh, the solid materials uh, particle arrangement are like this. They are actually exactly the same because the particles are so close to each other. In the last one, there is a gas and the gas particles are far apart from each other. So, uh, and also uh, you should know that all substance, all materials, it doesn't matter they are solids, liquids or gases, the particles are inside them are always in motion. Uh, let's take a look at first of all solid. Inside the solid particles are always vibrating in fixed position. As you can see from here, they are just vibrate, they are not moving around, they vibrate in fixed position. In liquid, the particles moving around but within the liquid, not just uh, the take up all the container, just within the liquid they are moving around. But in gas, particles moving in all of the direction of the container. And with aid of the arrangement of particles and also the vibration, sorry, uh, the movement and motion of the particles, uh, we can come some conclusion for solid, liquids and gases that the solid uh, particles arrangement are close to each other here. Spacing means that uh, arrangement of particles, they are close to each other, as you can see from this picture again. So in liquid, they are close to each other, but not as much as solid particles. In gas, they are far apart from each other. So let's find out the forces inside this um, solid, li liquid, and gases. So uh, between particles, there are forces that they make the uh, particle held together. If the particles are so close to uh, each other, it means that uh, the forces between them are uh, so strong. Strong force means that particles are held together. So in solid, you can see that uh, the particles are close together and that's why the forces between these particles are strong. But in liquid, uh, the particles are close, but not as much as solid particles. So, and that's why forces between liquid particles are fairly strong. So in gas, particles are far apart from each other and that's why uh, the, between these particles there is only weak forces. So movement or, and um, motion of the particles, we already know that inside the solid particles vibrate in fixed position in the liquid and the gas particles moving around. Uh, so, and here is the, explanation of the sum properties of solid liquids and gases. So you know that the solid have a fixed shape and fixed volume. Uh, why the solid has a fixed shape? Because uh, solid particles, solid particles uh, are held to tightly uh, packed together. They are um, held by strong forces together. Because of strong forces between the particles, they are so close to each other and that's why uh, they keep their shape. In a liquid, uh, liquid uh, shape can change. A liquid uh, can easily take the, any container's shape and that's why liquid's shape change. Why it's changing? Because liquid can easily flow and it has also uh, the fairly strong force, but um, the particles are not close together as much as solid particles. So, uh, and that's why it can be flow. 
so because of that, liquid is fluid and also gas is also fluid. Uh, liquid and gases are fluids because they can flow and they can easily take the shape of any container. Gas is also. Uh, gas also don't have a fixed shape. It can easily take a, a shape of the, any container. So uh, in liquid, it has also fixed volume. Uh, and in gas, uh, the, uh, it doesn't have any fixed shape or fixed volume. So uh, solid cannot be compressible. Uh, why? Because if we take syringe and if we put inside this uh, solid, uh, let's say that rock, if we try and if we put our hand here and try to compress this, uh, we can. It will be challenging for us to do this because uh, the solid particles are close together, and there is even there is not any uh, the empty place between these particles. Because of that, you cannot compress uh, the solid. Compress means that just uh, squashing the particles into a little volume. But in liquid, if you put your hand here and try to uh, to compress this, uh, it will be so difficult for you to com compress because liquid particles are also close together. Uh, but in gas, uh, if you again put your hand here and compress this from here, uh, you, you actually you will actually do it. Why? Because the ga gas particles are far apart from each other and. That's why while you are compressing them, the gas particles uh, they come together and uh, come closer. And because of that, the gas can be compressible. So, but liquid and solid cannot be compressible. Uh, and expanding and contracting, what does it mean? Uh, in the first picture, in the first animation, you are seeing that uh, particles inside the solid. Uh, and it doesn't matter the uh, solid material have a higher temperature or lower temperature. It doesn't matter all substance, inside all substance, particles are always in motion. Maybe it has a zero Celsius degree, it's ice. Again, there is a, there is a particles motion inside this. So, um, it is just example for any solid particles. There, there is a vibration of the particles inside this. If we give heat energy, if we increase the temperature of this substance, the particles start to move, uh, to vibrate too fast like this. While they are vibrating too fast, they want to get more space and their volume will increase because you know that volume is the space that the, uh, the substance take up. And they want to get more space, and this process is called expanding. Expanding happening while you are increasing, but while the um, substance temperature increases. So, uh, opposite process is called contracting. Uh, let's take this, and here is the temperature is higher, and the uh, particles are vibrating too fast. If we decrease, if we cool down this substance, the particles start to uh, the motion of the particles start to slow down, and while they are slowing down, they are coming together and going to be again close and uh, getting the small space. And the volume is decreasing, so this process is called contracting. Contracting happens when you when the temperature of the material decreases. So uh, in a gas. It's a low temperature here, uh, the particles moving around, but if you increase the temperature, they are moving around so fast. They want to get more space, but here the volume is constant. So, and uh, here is the example uh, for diffusion, but how can we ensure that the particle model is actually correct. So diffusion and Brownian motions, which you, are, you, you will learn about after diffusion, that uh, this particle model is actually correct. So diffusion is a process that is related to movement of 
uh, the fluid particles. You already know that the fluid are gases and liquids. Uh, so diffusion is the move, movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. What does it mean? In gases and liquids, particles move randomly. So uh, from one place to another place. And the particles collide with each other or within container, the containers wall. This makes the change of direction and eventually the particles are spread through the whole container. As you can see, it's uh, this uh, container full of water. When you pour inside this any liquid or something, like that, let's say that you are just pouring inside this uh, liquid, uh, which is in red color, and they start to spread out within this liquid. This process happening like this, we're just pouring inside this uh, blue liquid and it's spreading out without mixing. Just you don't mix this, it but it's spreading out itself. Why? Because the particles moving around, particles uh, and the particles of this uh, liquid start to mix the particles of uh, the water. So this process happening like that, the particles moving around. Just uh, the a simple, explain, a simple example for diffusion motion is that they're using the perfume. If you use the perfume, uh, the person in one room, the person who is uh, on the other side of the room will immediately um, uh, the smell uh, the, uh, this perfume. Why? Because the perfume molecules are going to mix with the molecules of the air and they are going to spread out and through the room and that's why you can smell this um, perfume. And so this process is called diffusion. And the next process is Brownian motion. Here is the uh, example for Brownian motion. Uh, Brownian motion can happen inside the liquid and gases, and also diffusion happen inside liquid and gases. Why? Because uh, liquid and gases particles are always moving around. In the Brownian motion, uh, the particle, which is in red color, it's uh, just another microscopic particle. Let's say that it's uh, gas particles, it's a gas particles. Inside the gas particles, there's another microscopic small uh, particle there, there, there are. Actually, this particle is not moving. It's moving because of the heating of uh, gases particles. Gases particles moving around, you know that always rapidly, moving around in all of the direction. While they are moving, they are heat this uh, red, um, the strange, particle and making this um, move uh, through this. Actually, it doesn't have, don't, don't have any uh, movement, but because of the uh, collisions of this air, uh, the gas particles, it is moving. So this process is called Brownian motion and Brownian motion can happen also inside the liquid. So, uh, and we are just moving in right now into another, uh the another part of this topic so uh i want to start with a question this question is maybe is familiar uh for you because um and you also know the answer of this question which one is heavy of course rock is heavy uh here's the let's take this rock here's the volume of this rock is small but uh volume is a balloon of balloon is so big but why this one is big? Uh, this one is heavier than this one because of density. So density is defined as mass per unit volume. Uh, it means that in order to find the density, you should find the mass and volume. Density is the amount of matter within the certain volume. So density is the property of the matter that uh, how the particles are packed together. If the particles are tightly packed together, are close together, it means that the density inside that material is higher. If the particles are far apart from each other, so density of that uh, the material is going to be low. So here is the 
uh, the explanation of it's the explanation of the first this question. So high density means that particles are tightly back together, they are close together. It's an example for rock. Let's say that it's a rock particles, and the low density means that the particles are far apart from each other. It's a explanation of the of the balloon. So the uh, particle arrangement of the balloon. So uh, in order to find the density, we need to find the mass, we need to find the volume. Uh, so uh, here is the formula for finding the density. If you have a mass and volume, with aid of this formula, you can find out the density. So in short version, this formula can be written like this rho echo mass divided by volume. Rho here is density, M here mass, V here volume. Let's get find uh, the unit for the density. You know that the unit of mass is kilogram. And the unit of uh, volume is meter cubed. So ki kilogram over meter cube is the unit for density. And also there is another unit for density that, because you know that uh, masses unit is also gram. Oh my God, it's so big. Okay, at the volumes, um, unit can be centimeter cube. So this one and this one are units for density. Kilogram per meter cube and gram per centimeter cube are units for density. So. Uh, how can we find the mass? In order to find the mass, we should use the balance or scale, which is in this picture. So how can we find the volume? In order to find the volume, we need to uh, identify our object is regular shaped object or irregular shaped object. If the object is a regular shaped object, it means that it has a straight um, sides and with aid of ruler we can uh, measure this and uh, we can find its volume volume equal high multiplied by width multiplied by length you need to just find the high length and width after multiplying them each other you will get the volume of regular shaped object but what about the irregular shaped object here is the, uh, the example for irregular shaped object Irre irregular shaped object the ob uh, is the object that uh, we cannot uh, uh, measure its sites with aid of the ruler. We cannot find the proper site to measure its sites. And that's why it's called irregular shaped object. In order to find the volume of this, we should use the measuring cylinder. It's called measuring cylinder. We should pour inside this uh, uh, some amount of water. After pouring this, uh, look at first of all, look at the water level of um, level of water. Here in our case, the water level is 600 milliliter. It means that it's a volume of uh, water. So after putting a uh, irregular shaped object inside this, the, of course, this uh, water will rise up. And uh, after that, uh, the record final water level, final water level is 800 milliliter. So after subtract, subtract them, you will get a uh, volume of uh, irregular shaped object. So subtraction of this initial water level and final water level and initial level, water level will give you the uh, volume of irregular shaped object. So uh, you, uh, you already learned that what's a density. So uh, we can find out uh, which uh, state of matter has a higher density uh, and density we said before that is a property that the how a particles are close together 
So here is that in solid, particles are so close together, it means that in the solid, density is higher. And the next uh, one is a liquid, but the last one is a gas. And the gas uh, density is lower because uh, the particles are far apart from each other. So, but here is a question, how temperature affects on density? Let's say that you are increasing the um, any substances temperature, but how this affect on density? Let's find example for this to explain. Let's let's explain with this uh, animation. First of all, we have a solid, and vibration is like this. Uh, when you increase temperature, and it's getting expanding, and volume is increasing, it's called expanding process. So in the first one, uh, when the temperature is lower, the particles are close together. Density is higher. But here, when you increase its temperature, the particles are a little bit apart from each other. So and that's why density uh, decreases. So when you increase the temperature in the expanding process, uh, the density decreases. But what about the opposite process? If you decrease the temperature, how density will change? Uh, let's take this example. Let's say that your first material is this. Uh, it has a higher temperature. When you cool down this, you will get this material. First of all, your temperature density is uh, lower, but when you get this one after decreasing the temperature, uh, the particles now are close together. And because of that, density increases. So if you if the temperature of the material decreases, uh, it means that density increases. Uh, density and the temperature are uh, inversely proportional. So in contracting process, density increases. In expanding process, the density decreases.